five. But lots of running, jumping, and throwing left to do. Back in Fayetteville, here are the men's team standings after one event on the second day. Arkansas with just a one-point lead over Ole Miss with Alabama three back, A&M right there, so is Tennessee. So very tight amongst the top six, but still a lot of running, jumping, and throwing left to go on day number two. Next event on the track is the men's 60-meter final. Leonard Scott still the championship record holder now 22 years later and a, quite a glut of 6.45 runners there for the collegiate record. Focusing in this final in the middle of the track, the Auburn sophomore from Nigeria, Nigeria Favor Ashe. Well, and remember last year in the qualifying round, he false started. I think that was just first time jitters at this big SEC meet. He went on to have an outstanding outdoor season. He was runner-up at the NCAA Championships in the 100 meters. But I don't think anybody in this field, Dwight, has better top-end speed than Faber Ashe here. And he's known back home in Nigeria, in Lagos, Nigeria, at his track club as, uh, as Ashe Bolt. And they call him that because he stepped onto the track club and immediately started breaking records. He's coached by three-time Olympian Deji Alu bronze medalist from the 2004 Olympic Games in an effort to just raise the level of sprinting in Nigeria. Here's another young athlete from Auburn. So Auburn has two real outstanding young sprinters. This is the Malaysian 100-meter champion, senior 100-meter champion, and also the Malaysian 60-meter champion. He broke that Malaysian 60-meter record about two weeks into the season. And word, it didn't take long for word to get back to Malaysia after his qualifying round. I, looked him up online literally an hour after his qualifying race and they said that he was poised to break another Malaysian record but Azim Fami is somebody who we're going to talk about I think for the next couple of years just an absolute talent here are the lane assignments with Ashe in four and Fami in six remember that here in Arkansas we run right to left so lane one is closest to the screen lane eight the furthest away Here we see Lance Lang closest to us. Just different color uniform this year. Ran for the Kentucky Wildcats last year. Now running for the Arkansas Razorbacks, but he was third at these championships one year ago. Keep an eye on that young man in the bright blue there with the number five on his hip. That's Jordan Anthony, just a freshman from Kentucky. Plays wide receiver on the football team. But he, is one, he was one of the fastest high school sprinters in the country last year. Number two all time on the US under 20 list. D'Angelo Cherry is that, uh, is that leader. But there you see Jordan Anthony on the left. Talked to Lonnie Green today and he said, this kid has the goods. Absolutely a phenomenal sprinter. There we see Fami. And Ken Harnden, who found Fami, said he was really pleased with his execution yesterday. He wanted him to really stay calm in the finals. And he was really excited, certainly about Faber Ashe. Said he wanted him to get his hips higher halfway through the race as he made the transition from his drive phase to his upright running posture. So the two Auburn sprinters favor Ashe there on your screen in four. Then two to his right, the freshman, the 18-year-old Azim Fami in six. And a good start for Ashe again, like yesterday, and he is gone with Anthony right there following closely. It is favor Ashe followed closely by Jordan Anthony of Kentucky getting second, and he had trouble with that transition from the straightaway to that curve yesterday as well. It's a little abrupt, a bit different than it used to be as they redid the track here. 
but that is a 6-52 victory for Favor Ashe. Fami finishing fourth. Jordan Anthony getting the runner-up spot, and Godson Ogunbrume was third. Well, Favor Ashe looked uncomfortable, really, from the time that he got in the on your marks position. It looked like he almost anticipated the set a little early, but there you see he got out of the blocks with really no trouble at all. There you see Jordan Anthony in the bright blue on our left, his right. But we'll take another look. There you see Faber Ashe. He really stood up tall in the qualifying and pulled away from the rest of the field. Looked like he just might have caught a cramp there as he went through the finish line. But an outstanding run for him, just showing more consistency each week. And Ken Harnden said that he would he would hope that Ashe has more in the tank in a couple of weeks. He doesn't think that he has peaked yet this indoor season. He wants to do that in Albuquerque, New Mexico in just two weeks' time. And that 6.52 by Ashe is the fastest at this meet since Christian Coleman, the world champion, ran that same time in 2017. That's how good that run was. And Ashe looking not quite as fluid and relaxed as he did yesterday in the qualifying. So two more weeks can make a big, big difference. All right, when we come back, the women will contest the straightaway sprint when we return to Fayetteville. <laughs> 